This time I'll call the Haywood County Board of Education meeting to order. This time I'd like to ask Mr. Jimmy Rogers if he would lead us in our board prayer this evening and immediately followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Let us pray. Most wonderful, gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the many opportunities you've given us. Lord, we want to thank you for allowing us to join here tonight to help make decisions for the better education of the children of Haywood County Schools. We thank you, Lord, for our leaders, our administrators, our staff, and our schools. And we especially thank you, Lord, for our community, the children, the parents, the grandparents, and all of Haywood County comes together, Lord, to help us have the best school system possible. Lord, we pray that you be with those that can't be with us. We pray for health, safety, and wellness of all of our children in this county, and all of our staff, and all of our schools. And Lord, we're so blessed to live in such a wonderful world, in a better place than these mountains of Western North Carolina, Lord. Lord, as we make these decisions, we pray your guidance and direction upon us and your guidance and direction in every step we make among this earth. Now, Lord, take all these blessings. Thank you for your gracious that you provide upon us. All these things, Lord, we ask in thy precious name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Under announcements, our next regular board meeting will be held here Thursday, November 3rd, due to a lot of things that are happening, election day, etc and some meetings we'll be going to. Uh, also, uh, the next regular work session will be Thursday, October 27th here at the Education Center at six o'clock. And board members remember our NCSBA, North Carolina School Board Association annual conference is November 14th through the 16th in Greensboro, North Carolina. And if you plan on going, I think we've already set that. But uh, anyway, just a reminder are there any agenda adjustments that need to be made? Jim, we have several items. Building the grounds. We normally do it. We'll do it right after, right before the um, finance committee between 15 and 16. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, we have one extra item for the okay. finance committee. We'll just do it during the uh, finance committee meeting, if that's okay with everybody. All right. I do have an announcement. I'm a uh, grandfather again as of this morning at 10-18. Uh, my son and his girlfriend had uh, Camden Macaulay Francis nine pounds two ounces 20 and a half inches long at 10 18 this morning so <laughs> it's always a blessing always a blessing all right now i got out of order here we need to, a motion to approve the uh agenda as amended motion mr nesbitt's made the motion second, second mr rogers any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor there being none we'll vote all those in favor say aye, aye. opposed Motion carries unanimously. Now comes a time of a special recognition, and uh, this is exciting and and also uh, a little bit uh, scary uh, for me. I want to do a good job on this presentation tonight to honor someone that has given 38 years of service to Haywood County Schools. Um, Dr. Bill has been dedicated uh, came up through the, the ranks and paid his dues and became our superintendent at probably one of the most challenging times that we've had in Haywood County Schools with COVID and 
all the other issues that come up and the, not to even mention the floods and et cetera, et cetera. But so we've had plenty of challenges, but uh, this board, uh, Dr. Bill recognizes your hard work and dedication and we would like to uh, have, present you with a gift and I would like for you to open it to see in, in front of us, please. Thank you, Mr. Francis and board members. I see we have the appropriate neutral color blue. Unless you're from Bethel, then it's a great color. that so I don't have to pull out my pocket knife. It's a joke. You can laugh. I don't have a pocket knife. Not, not on me. Oh, wow. Uh, this is a clock, which I will hang prominently, uh, probably over my desk at my farm, maybe at home. It says Dr. Bill Nolte, Hedwig County Schools, 1984. Woo! Long time ago. The 2022 in dedication. I'm supposed to read this yeah, instead of you. Please. Okay. In, <laughs> uh, in appreciation for your years of service and dedicated uh, leadership, congratulations on your retirement. Thank you very much. <laughs> and a little stand. <laughs> Thank you. I get that back, right? Absolutely. We'll look right here. I had uh, asked the board. Uh, the other night if I could make a few comments at the end, but since they're so kind with the clock, I'll just do it right now. How's that? Save that for later. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, and I, I wrote this down so I wouldn't mess it up. I don't want to mess up the last meeting too much. Uh, Chairman Francis, members of the board, thank you for giving me an opportunity to make a few comments during my last regularly scheduled board meeting. Believe it or not, I intend to be brief. That is, that's pretty tough for me sometimes. I'm deeply honored and appreciative to live and have worked in Haywood County. There's something very special about Haywood County and Haywood County Schools. We focus on what is best for students. Uh, this has been evident in our academic and extracurricular success for many years. That student focus was especially evident during COVID and the ransomware attack and flooding and you just name it, okay? We won't relive all that. Board, I wanna thank you for what you do. You have led very effectively during very difficult times. Your work is deeply appreciated by me and many others. Uh, keep working together for the best interests of our students and staff. Your work matters. Your work has had a positive influence on many lives. Your positive influence impacts lives now and will impact lives for the years to come. And I mean that, especially what we've been through the last couple of years. Our students have an advantage that will last, I think, quite some time. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to serve as the superintendent of Haywood County Schools. And I believe you are in very good hands with uh, your, the board and the leadership and teachers and all the staff members. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bill. Dr. Bill, again, thank you and congratulations. A well-deserved retirement. Job well done. Thank you for putting up with us too, Dr. Nolte. Absolutely. <laughs> and putting up with Mr. Kirkpatrick too. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> I'll, I'll miss you. I'll miss you. I'm not sure I'll miss uh, 
all the things that we've been through, but I, I certainly will miss you and your leadership. Thank you. Next on our agenda, we have Dr. Putnam with a couple of items. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, once a year, uh, it's required that we provide to you a random student drug testing report. Um, I wanted to give you uh, some numbers uh, in this report. Um, <clears throat> cost of uh, conducting drug testing um, total for the 2021-22 school year Total cost was $6,508. We tested all four um, high schools, including Central Haywood High School, Haywood Early College, Isga High School, and Tus Tuscola High School. Um, in September, 3.7% um, of those tested were found to be positive. In November of 2021, 6.67% .6 of one of our high schools was positive, and another of our high schools, 50%. I'll let you look at those high schools if you'd like. Um, Central Haywood High School, we had a 50% positive test rate. In Tuscola High School, we had 6.67% positive test rate. February of 2022, Central Haywood High School, 33.3% of those tested were positive. Visca High School, 3.4% were uh, positive. Tuscola High School, 12% positive. May 2022, which is our final test, random drug testing, Central Haywood, 50% of those sampled were positive. <coughs> At Pisgah High School, 7.4% of those tests. <coughs> so if we look at totals for our four major high schools, Central Haywood High School had a percent positive uh, in the random sampling of 42.9%. Haywood Early College had 0.0% positive. Pisgah High School, 4.7% excuse me, 3.8%, Pisgah High School, 3.8% of those tested positive. And Tuscola High School, 4.7% of those tested were positive. For an overall positivity rate of 5.2%. Uh, total number of students at Central Haywood, seven. Haywood Early College, nine. Pisgah High School, 106. Tuscola High School, 107. That's 229 tests, uh, random pulls or selections uh, for drug testing. Any questions for me? My memory, I can't remember, is that trending? Do you see any trends from previous years? Uh, or do you know? Or It is up slightly. Okay. Um, and depending on school, it could be up significantly. Um, we're, we were accustomed to seeing a 0% positivity rate across most schools. Now we're starting to see 3 three to 5% amongst those schools. Uh, we do have a uh, policy that governs this. What do we do when we have a positive? The first one is, is meant to be a counseling, um, communicative uh, uh, situation with the parents, making them aware of the situation. Uh, it meant to be an educational opportunity for all parties involved. And then after that, consequences begin to um, accrue. Um, but either way, I think the identification of these known uses um, is an opportunity, hopefully, to cur curb lifelong afflictions of usage. Anybody else have any questions? In just from my understanding, if they test positive, then they, they're they mandatory to test again on the next sampling, correct? 
it, it, it elevates from that point. If if it ever a uh, student tests positive, they're, it's mandatory that they're pulled on the next one. Okay. Random, I guess you'd say. So. Any other questions? Comments? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Putnam. Thank you. You're, you're up next. <laughs> right. Uh, in compliance with board policy 4270-6145, uh, the superintendent's annual report to the board on compliance with laws and policies related to student wellness shall include a report on the system's compliance with laws policies related to concussions and head injuries um, on um, so what we've done to suffice this policy um, all athletic directors um, were reminded of the requirement of the concussion sheet that all athletes parents and guardians school employees volunteers or first responders must complete pertaining to concussion or they're allowed to participate in interscholastic athletic activities found in section B. I also uh, encouraged ADs to have a preseason parent meeting uh, to take care of these items in a timely manner. Sections B, E, and G are audited each school year. Pisgah High School was audited for the 21-22 school year. Heidi Morgan submitted all items requested and the audit was successful. Per North Carolina High School Athletic Association rules, all high schools, all high school student athletes and parents of high school student athletes must view the crash course concussion education video prior to each sports season. And I can tell you we completed all of those. Uh, in section C, school head injury information sheet each year, all coaches, school nurses, athletic directors, first responders, Volunteers, student athletes, and parents of student athletes must be provided with a concussion and head injury information sheet that meets the requirements of the state board. Before any student, a school employee, volunteer, or first responder will be allowed to participate in interscholastic athletic activities, including tryouts, practices, or competitions, he or she must sign the head, in, uh, head injury information sheet. Uh, the principal of each school shall ensure that a complete and accurate record of the return signed sheets is maintained in accordance with uh, law and state board policy. I can tell you that that was completed as well. So we are in compliance in regard to uh, concussion and head injuries. Very good. Any further questions for me? That seems to be the hot topic right now from the NFL down to Hayward County Schools. So. <laughs> <laughs> Compliance with the concussion is a serious situation for sure. Yeah, very serious. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? Thank you. Thank you. We have had some folks sign up to want to address the board. Now is the time period designated by the Board of Education for public comments. This time is set aside for comments from the general public in regard to matters of concern to the public. However, we request that you do not address specific students and or personnel. Comment, comments are limited to three minutes. The board requests that all speakers adhere to the time limitation and prohibition against mentioning individual students and personnel. Now, I'm going to display this young lady's last name, I'm afraid. Katie Galliotti. Galliotti. Thank you. Katie Galliotti from Pisgah High School. A parent from Pisgah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Nolte, Dr. Putnam, uh, staffs and guests. I'm here this evening to speak on behalf of the Pisgah football team. As so, this is a kind reminder that just because our field has disappeared, our students have not. This includes all students participating in other activities and sports that have had their field taken away by a natural disaster. Everyone has been greatly impacted, but no student has been forgotten. As most of you are aware, Pisgah boys have not been able to play a home game in quite some time. This is all games, 22 plus games, not at home. I would like for you all to just take a second and think about what this would be like for you. As a student, or as a parent or even as a coach 
or staff member of Pisgah High School. In order to travel to every single game, these boys not only have to maintain physical strength, but they must remain mentally strong and humble in hopes that one day they will be able to play at home again. Not to mention the time and effort the coaches and staff put in to making sure they are fed and on time for games or the gas money buses and parents use to be at each and every game. This is not intended to be a complaint as our Pisgah community will always show up to support one another. Rather, this is something I just want you all to take into consideration when making the decision per our request. This year is slightly unique as our boys were finally asked whether they wanted to play the Pisgah Tuscola game at home or at Tuscola. The question was asked more than once and each time the players replied with at home. To my knowledge, the administration had a couple of meetings about this offer with an unsuccessful outcome. Exhausting all opportunities, including significantly downsizing the number of people attending, making the home game a more safe and manageable place. Uh, keep in mind, this will make the third year in a row that we have played at Tuscola. With this being the outcome and the game being at Tuscola next year, there will be some boys on our varsity team that will never get the chance or opportunity to play a true home game on their own field. So the question arises, that arises is when does this become an ethical issue? I think that time is now and that is why I'm here tonight reaching out for more answers. It's okay. It is concerning that our Haywood community as a whole cannot come together to make a proper decision for these boys. If the Pisgah boys were offered the opportunity to play at home and this is their year to decide and every effort should be should have been put forth to hear their request. Oh, God. Sorry. It's okay. If it meant downsizing the number of fans and guests, with this, if it meant downsizing the number of fans and guests, with this being said, ticket sales have already opened up, and the game is to be once again held at Tuscola Friday, making for a hard turnaround now. Because there is too much conflict with administration making this decision, I'm asking the board this evening to make the choice for a one-game reset next year so that our boys will get the chance and the opportunity that they deserve. I can't read anymore. On their own field. With this being said, I have reviewed previous board meetings on the completion of our fields. I believe if I heard correctly, the Bethel turf will be completed July 2023. If it is possible to schedule this game for next year, for next year further out, and Pisgah's field is complete in time, great. If not, we're asking you to downsize the number of people attending and hold this game at the Bethel field. Thank you all so much for your time and consideration this evening. I realize this is not an easy decision, but we will rely on you all to make the best choice regarding this matter. Sorry, I got emotional. That's okay. Can you tell it means a lot to her? Yeah. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Next, thank you for your comments, and we do have time to, to uh, consider that request we've got some time now for next year and we'll consider that next we have miss connie allen who wants to address the board i do remember receiving a letter from miss connie earlier i think she states here august of 2022 is that correct that is correct okay and my letter was an attempt to say help. I've gone through the chains of central office whose hands are tied when it comes to finances. And my concern was the uh, tutor pay that um, Title I tutors are, are still currently paid after a number of years and uh, what was once paid 15 plus years ago. And so I, I didn't hear anything back from any of the board members regarding my letter. And so I just assumed it was sort of a dead issue. And then I saw it in the September um, 12th 
um, school board news, and that, actually that's the first time I had noticed it being under a finance uh, committee kind of uh, area. I went to look back and didn't see it in August or September of 2021. So my question is, is has it become part of a finance to where the board is considering additional monies to help supplement the Title I budget that our central office has to deal with in a very tight fashion in order to give a pay increase to Title I retired staff? That's a question we'll be glad to get back to you with. Okay. Dr. Nolte or Dr. Putnam, would y'all get us back now? I know when I got your letter, I went up and sat down in the superintendent's office. We had a discussion about it. And Dr. Nolte has very, uh, uh, I mean, he has communicated with me. And very good. You know, um, I mean, there's no complaint there. Okay. Because I dreamed he was going to be very mad at me last night. Did <laughs> <laughs> you not make that come true? No, he has communicated with me. And okay. so did Ms. Thompson. This journey began three years ago yeah. asking about this. Yeah. Ms. Thompson communicated with me two summers in a row, oh, and Dr. Is. Nolte has communicated with me. So it was like, okay. okay, central office, their hands are tied with some monies, so what can you all do? I even uh, tweaked a little letter to send to the county commissioners, and Brian can't think of Brian's last Morehead. name. Morehead. It was Brian a Morehead. spokesperson for them. You know, they give money to the county. They're getting ready to recalibrate what kind of money funds that they give to the county, but they're not responsible for how the county spends that money. It would That's go back. the response I got from them. The short answer would be it would go back through the finance committee. Okay. okay. If we have authority over those funds. And I'll have to find that out. Okay. Or ways to supplement yeah. those funds. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Next we have Stephanie Bell. Thank you, Chairman, Board. Congratulations on your retirement. Dr. Putnam. Uh, I have a pretty simple problem that maybe we can solve, guys. Uh, there seems to be a lot of problems with coming in and out of the schools. My children personally go to Bethel and coming out of that right there, and trying to turn left. There's a turning lane to come in and there's also traffic that passes. I've noticed a sheriff that sits out there. I've contacted the sheriff's office to ask why they can't direct the traffic. And they said that that deputy is not technically put in that place by anyone in particular they just ask them to sit there if they get a call they have to go uh, a deputy sheriff also let me know that there are grants for school resource officers we have some that are in the city limits like at Canton Middle and Pisgah you know but the outside schools uh, there's a grant that offers a hundred percent of the money to provide for their vehicles, their training, their pay, the whole shebang. And the next year it'll drop to 75%, 50% to 25%. I was unsure of the avenue that I needed to go to to see what we can do about either getting traffic control for these schools or possibly um, reaching out for the grants. For Clarify the for me, you, are you Bethel Elementary or Bethel Middle? Bethel, Ele well, either one, they're both, uh, you know, not okay. in, I got you. Like, you know, it can't, the Canton cops will, they have school resource officers inside of the, you know, the city okay. there, but outside where it's like sheriffs, um, and they're not, they're not funded as school resource officers. Technically, it's just last month, there was a car wreck there with my friends. There's been car wrecks that I've seen a lot on Facebook. People are saying, you know, Jonathan Valley, and there's lots of schools in our county that we need to have somebody out there to direct traffic in the morning and in the evenings because it's dangerous. And I think the school resource officer grant that they have um, is something that maybe we can file for. To, uh, we'll get someone to respond back to you. I'm pretty sure that we've already applied for that. Oh, you have? So, or we were in the process of. We have applied them. for the, for um, safe eight uh, safe schools uh, funded resource officers. Uh, the funding is they give you two dollars and you pay a dollar. It's a one-year grant that you might be able to renew for a second year. 
so we have applied for that grant um, through the state we did that mm, a couple months ago I told you all about it in a work right. session or something okay. so and I know Bethel Middle School has a school resource officer already I noticed that they did have someone yeah. that set outside of the doors at Bethel but if they could um, I think it we need to address the problem that there's a, there's an issue with traffic and we need to get somebody out there in front of the schools for the safety of our kids and for the parents and stuff that are around so I hope we can take care of this guys thanks so much thank you Ms. Bam next we have uh, Dale Glantz EHS people bought season tickets. Uh oh. First, I'm going to say one thing before I get started. I'm a Haywood County person. Both schools matter. I've traveled a lot of games this year and last to go watch my grandsons play. And I understand that stadium was open. They could play in Haywood County instead of Bunker County. Now I'll go back. I'm aggravated at the tents. I have 12 seats on the 50 yard. Low eight. They started some last year. They started time over equipment. It's not rained very much. I went to Tuscola. I even talked to Miss Fox when she was there. She's tried to help. All the people have tried to help. But I don't pay seven hundred and some dollars a year to watch a ten. I can't see the ball game from a forty to the twenty. Now the system principal he moved it down to the twenty. You can't see then. <laughs> Talk to Coach Brookshire. It was down the last two games, but it's uh, video equipment. Also went to Pisgah's game. They had a tent up, and you couldn't see it. Swain County. So I think it's a waste of money. And I've got pictures showing there's 40 some empty seats below me. I've been told move to hire. I do good at times to get up the rows I've got because lungs problems I've got things and arms. Parking lot, you better about have a high wheel truck. I told the year before COVID, prices went up. They put gravel, one load of gravel, in my opinion, was put. <coughs> and it's a gully up there right now. I hope people coming Friday night better go. This past Friday night, we're doing better. We had people making sure the season tickets had their seats. Kids playing down, you can't see, and they're supposed to be for handicapped people, what is told. And one more problem, I'll shut up. Back gate for the <coughs> tickets go in. Now, it's open when you go in. Half time, it's bad luck. That is a far hazardous emergency. This has been going on a year before COVID. They can't keep teachers or whoever back there to keep that gate open. And I don't think they're going to lose a lot of dollars at halftime people coming in. Yeah. It's not worth one person's life for a padlock on a gate. Went to the fire department and everywhere else again, so I decided to come here. I hope you people it's important can get something done. Okay. And I appreciate it. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Board members, you've had an opportunity to look at the September 8th closed session, September 12th closed and regular session minutes, September 20th closed and special uh, called session minutes. So move. We need a motion for approval, and Mr. Kirkpatrick just gave it to Second. us. Second, Mr. Clark. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Miss Stevenson's up next. Next to Cameron Francis, members of the board, staff, and guests. Tonight I bring to you a contract amendment. It's already approved a contract, um, a pro bono contract with Dr. Michael Brown. And um, unfortunately, counseling and psychological services were left off of that. So we wanted to bring it back to you with those two words included okay 
It's still make them. same conditions, correct? Yeah. Right. Okay. Make a motion that we uh, approve. approve the amendment for Dr. Brown's contract. Okay. We have a motion from Mr. Mr. Patrick, second Mr. Rogers. Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, I need to also bring to you another contract amendment with Public Consulting Group. Um, they made some changes with the state contract, and so that means that each district needed to have amendments made, um, and it reflects the fee of 13% that will continue for our fee-for-service billing for Medicaid services. Okay. Need a motion for approval. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Henson's made the motion. Second, Mr. Nesbitt. Any questions or discussion on the motion? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Stevenson. Next is Dr. Putnam with a slew of policies tonight. I'm just thankful that Mr. Cooper is not here tonight because he used to read every one of them and point out all the differences and all. And it got a little bit lengthy, so I'm counting on Dr. Putnam to do it concisely tonight. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. I was just getting the nod from Mr. Kirkpatrick. He didn't want me to read them verbatim. You can read them verbatim. So, um, for your pleasure, we have um, about, let's see, one, two, three, four policies for first reading, and as you know, Mr. Chairman, these are tabled for 30 days. That's correct. Uh, and for further consideration. Okay, they'll be, they will be tabled for 30 days for, or until our next regular board meeting for approval. Okay. okay. And then for second read, uh, we have quite a few. Uh, I'll give you a snapshot on that. Most of these are changes, either typos or uh, change in legal reference as state law changes so do our policy so uh, the substantialness of the changes is very small I make a motion we approve the second readings for the policy presented and I'm not gonna go through every one of them you okay can they're listed second we have a motion from mr. Kirkpatrick second mr. Rogers to approve the second reading listed uh, policies any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you much. Next on our agenda, uh, we talked about, and you've had an opportunity, board members, to look at our uh, upcoming superintendent's contract. And we need to take official action on this. The uh, initial contract, we I think the motion was for four years, but I think the Mr. Smathers discovered that we need to go three years. Correct. Okay. Correct. All we can legally do. There you go. This time I'll entertain a motion for approval of the superintendent contract. So moved. Second. Dr. Mer I mean, Mr. Burnett, seconded by Mr. Clark. Any questions or discussion on a motion on the floor? I moved you up, David. I made you a doctor. <laughs> Dr. David. <laughs> Any questions or I know they. I know there was some concern about some of the pay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming most of those got answered. Correct. And... The contract has been signed by you and Mr. Both well, Francis. I'm, wait, I'm waiting on approval tonight. I okay. have not signed it. Okay. Right. We're waiting on board approval. All right. And yes, the discussion was held, and all, to my knowledge, most of the concerns or all the concerns have been handled. All right. Okay. Any other questions or comments? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next, we had building and grounds, I believe, to add some items to our agenda. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have uh, four items to bring in the form of a motion. Uh, the first motion being to approve the design for painting the student section uh, 
of the stadium at C.E. Weatherby Stadium, uh, painting the student section black with a gold T okay. in that section. All right, we second. We have a motion from Dr. Rogers, second of Mr. Kirkpatrick. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? The cost involved? Yes, is the have any idea. Big T Club or the athletic club? Maintenance will do the painting um, if time allows. If not, then the school will be responsible for any costs. And the funding? Yep. They'll pay for the paints. Any cost. Yeah. Any cost. Any cost. Any other questions or comments? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Second motion is to approve the placement uh, as determined by maintenance personnel of a storage building at Canton Middle School. Okay. Second. We have a motion from Dr. Rogers, second Mr. Kirkpatrick. Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Third, Mr. Chairman, is a motion to, to approve a letter of intent to Dogwood Trust for the completion of the Tuscola High School farm using available funds. Okay. We have a motion from Dr. Rogers. I hear a second. Second. Okay. So, Mr. Nesbitt, any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And finally, Mr. Chairman, a motion to approve RFP number 13-22 in the amount of $137,000 for Tuscola High School farm grading with $65,000 of that coming from capital reserve and the remaining balance uh, from donated funds. Okay. Second. We have a motion from Dr. Rogers. Second, Mr. Rogers. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thanks for all the hard work of the building and grounds. Now it's the Finance Committee's turn. Mr. Clark. Uh, Mr. Chairman, earlier tonight, the Finance Committee reviewed all the monthly financial reports and they all look good. I'd like to bring that for a motion. Second. Can we have a motion from Mr. Clark? Second, Mr. Nesbitt. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, second item is a motion to approve a supplement plan for the school nutrition managers as follows. Uh, 2000 per year for schools with 300 or less students. Uh, 2250 per schools for schools between 301 and 700 students. And 2500 per year for schools with more than 700 students. And the reason is um, because of pay raises with the $15 an hour, we're trying to get the managers at the all 15 schools at a level where they can. Okay. And that's coming out of child nutrition funds, is that correct? Completely out of child nutrition okay. funds. Okay. Yes. All right. We have a motion from Mr. Clark. Do I hear a second? Second. Mr. Rogers, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Ms. Garland. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. You have before you tonight for your approval budget amendment number one. This is mainly to adjust the budget for increased state and federal funding. Okay. Motion to approve budget amendment number one, please. Okay. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Nesbitt, second from Mr. Kirkpatrick. Are there any questions or discussion on the motion? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Garland. Next, we have Dr. Nolte. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, item 18 is an agreement with a copyright attorney regarding the Tuscola logo. Mr. Smathers sent that to us, and we shared that in uh, a little bit of detail at the work session on Thursday, we'd like for your approval of that agreement. Okay. Make a motion we approve the agreement. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Kirkpatrick. Second. Second, Mr. Nesbitt. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? 
There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right. Francis, uh, pers under personnel, I would like to present to you the personnel that we discussed previously in closed session. For your information, we have 12 separation from employment, one employee status change, four ESS long-term substitutes, and three leave of absence. For your approval, we have 18 employments, 25 employee status changes, one leave of absence, one contracted service, 26 employee coaches, 13 non-employee coaches, and five volunteer services. Make a motion we approve the personnel as presented. Okay, we have a motion, Mr. Kirkpatrick, say on Mr. Henson. Are there any questions or discussion on the motion? That was five leave of absences instead of three. I think, yeah, it was five. I didn't want to, I didn't want to catch you. Please. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Five no, leave no. of absence, yes, sir. Yes. So that's correct. I'm having trouble uh, reading even with my glasses on. Thank you for it's all right. That's that's you been... and Mr. Jim Harley Francis. You're really good at catching those. <laughs> it's all, right. It's all right, Dr. Nolte. We just don't want anybody to be left out. Really last day. Your last official. Uh, yeah. You know, I just had to do okay, that. Okay, so the, the motion will be corrected to correct it that. Uh, say five. Yeah. Okay. Say five. We did have a motion and a second, correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Any, now I'm getting messed up. Stephen and Larry. Yep. Any discussion or comments on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to miss you guys. At this time, I'd like to invite the next superintendent, Dr. Trevor Putnam, to come up and introduce two new administrative appointments. Okay. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, it's a pleasure to, uh, number one, uh, stand in front of you, I guess, uh, unofficially as the next superintendent. That's very exciting to me. But also to name uh, the first steps in, in a, a replacement plan. I've, I've never had to replace myself, but it was pretty easy because it's pretty likely that they're going to go up. You know, you go up from there. So. Um, the first person I'd like to um, introduce um, is Graham Haynes. Um, Graham um, has served faithfully uh, at Waynesville Middle as a teacher, as a coach, uh, and, and now as principal. Uh, in between those stints, he also served faithfully as an assistant principal um, at uh, Escola High School. He served in a administrative AD role there as uh, amongst others. I've got to witness him grow and learn over the years and deal with some really tough situations. Uh, and he did so with class and dignity. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to introduce as the uh, Assistant Superintendent for Haywood County Schools, Mr. Graham Hanks. Chairman Francis, <clears throat> members of the board, um, Dr. Nolte, Dr. Putnam, Ms. Barker, it is an honor and uh, I'm really excited to be here tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank my wife and my family first. Um, knowing that you have somebody at home that cares about you and loves you and that you're happy to go home to uh, makes everything else throughout the day and all the situations that we deal with a whole lot easier. Um, so I sincerely appreciate them and I'm very blessed to have them. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Putnam for giving me this opportunity and for uh, entrusting me in this role for helping me be a better leader throughout the years and to be a better person as well. Um, as assistant superintendent my goal is just to continue to keep Haywood County Schools on that upward trajectory that we are on. Um, Haywood County Schools is a great schools it's a great school system um, Haywood County is a great county um, to be able to serve in a role like this and to, to help lead a school system that that helped shape you as a child uh, you know that, that you came through and a community that you grew up in that you're still a part of is just uh, it's a dream come true and it's amazing and uh, I uh, just look forward to working you all uh, working with you all and, and I will also keep the policy short 
that sounds like that's what you want. <laughs> that's very important. Yes, that's your number one job right <laughs> yeah. now. I, I can handle that. Okay. Can handle that. <laughs> Thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you, Graham. Congratulations. Brent, you want to do this one? All right, you come right on. I really didn't have a big plan, so it's going to be from the heart. Mr. Francis, members of the board, Dr. Putnam, Dr. Bill, Ms. Barker, it's my honor to introduce Casey Connard as the next um, principal of Waynesville Middle School. It's an honor to have Mr. Connard, his father, and Lisa, his mom, in the meeting with us. There's installed such character and integrity into Casey. I can't even say that y'all have done a great job with him. Gloria, we sat at a ball game the other night, and you asked, what do I say to him? I don't think you say anything. I just think you be there when he needs you, and that, that time will come. So words is not what he needs. He just needs support. And, Appreciate his fellow APs being here. Ms. Baldwin is Ms. Cope. That says a lot. Um, just Casey is a 100% go-getter. He has a lot of withitness. Um, I've never had to worry about Casey's loyalty to kids, to me, to Pisgah High School. I'll miss that. He's a hard worker. Um, I've never ran across anyone that didn't like his personality and what he stood for. So I think Waynesville is getting a gym. Um, I just kind of go back to that movie dances with wolves when kevin costner had to leave leave the indians and i'm that chief sitting there not wanting him to go but i know he has to go at some point and the thing that i would say to casey is he's a friend we've been in a duck blind together we've been at many ball games i spent 70 hours a week with him over the last four and a half years i'll miss you uh, i expect great things but i'm super proud of you good luck Chairman Francis, members of the board, Dr. Nolte, Dr. Putnam, Ms. Barker. Uh, first, I want to thank each of you for this opportunity. I was fortunate to start in Haywood County about 11 years ago at Hazelwood Elementary. So I um, had a great experience there, phenomenal teaching experience with some very, very good people. Um, I'm excited to be back there. I'm excited to serve the Waynesville community again. Uh, so I look forward to that. My last five years at Pisgah, I've worked with some amazing people who I've learned from each and every day. Um, I appreciate y'all coming. It's a it's a special place. Um, Miss Barker and Mr. Connor continue to be great continue to be great leaders and mentors for me. Um, I'm appreciative for their support. They've continued to support me and uh, made more in a, more of a difference in my life than they can imagine. So I appreciate y'all helping me get to this point. The Pisgah family has been and will continue to be family to me. Clint, Casey Crook, Carly Wells, Amanda Baldwin, Lena Cope, and Charlie Inman, along with many many other people have impacted my life more than they'll ever know. I'm thankful for the learning and the growing we've done together and the lifelong friendships that we've built. As I moved to Waynesville Middle School, I'll bring a love for students, a competitive mindset. I stole this one from Mr. Connor, a never arrived mentality. I believe in and I love Haywood County Schools uh, and I appreciate the trust that you guys have put in me to lead. Dr. Putnam, you as well. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the opportunity again I won't let you down. I said that was I as the assistant principal doing this little speech, and I'm going to say it again. I won't let you down. Let's go, Mounties. <laughs> you might, might want to wait on that go, Mounties thing until after Friday night. <laughs> after Friday night. <laughs> Very good. One thing I'd like to finish up with tonight is just to, again, say how much we appreciate Dr. Nolte's service to the Haywood County Schools. Uh, you can tell this is a close-knit group. Uh, we're going to miss him being with us. And Dr. Bill, I don't know how you did it, but you had nine bosses that had nine different agendas going all the different ways and different directions, but you somehow brought us all together. And you bragged on us a lot in your letter, but... Uh, you deserve a lot of the credit to keep us headed in the right direction and moving us up to seventh in the state. Uh, that didn't happen by chance. That took a team effort. Another thing I noticed tonight is the family atmosphere that we have here. These young ladies are going to be charged with when the 
men come home at night and tired and wore out and want to punch a hole in the wall, let's hope for we not have to get the guy out there to repair the sheetrock. And so I know there's going to be frustration, but I know that you've got tremendous support, not only here, but I'm sure at your churches and family uh, gatherings as well. And we will be praying for you guys' success at your schools. And, and uh, Dr. Putnam, we pray for you and your success as well. And Dr. Bill, thank you again, and we'll be praying for you as well so you don't go crazy with all this extra time that you're going to have. <laughs> at this time, meeting adjourned. <laughs>